Hi there! Today I want to show you how to control GPIOs in GNU slash Linux by using the programming language C. For this purpose I have connected a LED and a button to my Raspberry Pi here and I will write a user space application to control the LED and to read in the state of the button. But before I start here is a quick reminder on Saturday the 16th of October I will do a gaming special with my viewers, so I will play some rounds of Super Tox card with you, and if you want to join, just write me an email. I will put a link to my website in the description, and at my website you can find the, my email address. And in case you want to know more um, about this event before you, yeah, you sign up, um, I will put a link in the description to a video where I explain what I'm planning to do. But now let's go back to our user space GPIO program. So here I'm connected over SSH to my Raspberry Pi and I will create a new file I will call setgpio.c. GPIO.c. Okay. And first of all we need some headers. So most of them are standard, but I will highlight some important standard flip, string, standard int, unix standard, function control. So there are two ways to access the GPIO subsystem in Linux from user space. One is to use the sysfs file system, but in this video I will use um, the device node GPIO chip and to call some commands I will use IO control or I have to use IO control. And the commands are defined in the following header linux slash gpio.h. Okay, and now let's create a small main um, function here. Yeah, looks good. And we need some variables. So here is the file descriptor because we will open the um, device file dev slash gpio chip zero. And I will need two, two GPIOs. And they are represented in the GPIO handle request struct. And I will create one for the button and one for the LED. Okay. And here is another struct, gpio handle data in this data, and I will call it data. In this gpio handle data struct, I can put in the value I want to write out to the LED, or I can store the value I have read back from the button. And now I have to open the gpio chip device file to communicate with the driver. So I will use the open function. I will open slash dev slash gpio chip zero and I will open it with read and write permissions. If I get the value which is bigger than zero, um, opening was successful. If not, error, I had an error opening gpio chip zero and I will return with minus one from my main program. Okay, and now I can set up LED to output. And for this, I have to edit some variables in the GPO hand request structure. So the first one I have to set is the flags variable. Here I can specify the um, where I want to have an input or an output. And in this case, I want to request an output. Okay, the next thing is I will copy a string to the consumer label and the string will be LED. And while the program is running um, in the file slash sys slash kernel slash debug slash gpio, you can find all currently used gpios and we will find one with this label here. The next thing is I will set the default values. We'll use 
and let me copy this. I will set them to zero. Okay. And one cool thing about this struct is we can set multiple GPOs at once. So this lines variable here indicates how many GPOs we want to request. But here in my case, I will just request one. And the next argument, line offset, is an array and it contains the offsets or the pin numbers of the GPIOs we want to use. But in my case, I, will just, I want just to use one of them I want, and my LED is connected to GPIO 16. Okay. And now let's request it. For requesting, I will use an IO control. The name of the command is GPIO get line handle. Um, IO control and as an argument I have to pass my GPO handle request structure. And if this value is more than zero, an error occurred. Error setting GPIO 16 to output. I will close my device file and I will um, return with minus one here. And now the cool thing for the um, input pin, it's mostly the same. So let me copy these 12 lines here. So set button to input. And now I have to replace LED with button. And I forgot one up here. Okay. And my button is at GPO 20. And instead of an output, I will use an input here. I want to request an input. 22 input. Okay. And what we get here in this um, button struct here is a field called file descriptor. And this is just what it looks like. It's a file descriptor to our GPIOs. So here, in case of an error, I will call close the file descriptor of the button, oh, of the LED here. Okay, now let's set the LED. So for this, I will need my data struct and I will set the value zero here to one because I just the array is just one element big. And now I will use the IO control. Now of the file descriptor to my LED GPIO, the command is called GPIO handle set line values IO control. And I will set my data here. And if this is smaller than zero, I will just print out an error message. Okay, and the cool thing, ah, sorry, reading the GPO is quite similar. Button state. All I have to do here is, of course, I have to change my file descriptor, and the IO control command is called GPO handle get line values IO control. I will store it in my data variable here. And now, last but not least, let's print it out. Button is data value zero bigger than one. If so, I will print out pressed, as I will print out not pressed. Okay, and one very important thing, at, at the end we have to close all file descriptors. And not only of our device file, but also from our GPIOs. And another important thing, if I would run the program now, we wouldn't see the, GP, um, the LED turn on, because when we exit the program, um, it will turn the LED back off. So I will add a small sleep here, and now it should 
the LED should be on at least for two seconds. So now let me try to compile my program. Okay, looks good. And now let's run it. So the button is not pressed and the, cheap, and the LED was on now. Now I will press the button and execute it again. And now we get the message button is pressed. Yeah, cool. And now it is not pressed again. Okay, so that's how to control GPIOs in Linux by using the programming language C. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you have learned something. Thanks for watching and goodbye.